Pelegi Technical Services, your computers and electronics concierge service. Welcome back. Well, as you can see, you're looking at my hot water heater, which has decided to go kaputski on me. I've already tried replacing the thermocouple. This is actually the third time I've done that um, in recent years. They used to have a left-handed thread thermocouple. I've converted it to a right hand because I got tired of ordering the thing online. So, unfortunately, it's not working this time. It leads me to believe that the temperature control is, is hooched. So I'm gonna have to replace that. At the price of it and at the age of this hot water heater, it's just gonna come to replacing the hot water heater. So as you can hear, the water's just chugging along here right now, just draining out. I do have that little stub off pointing up in the air right here. That's allowing air to get in there. And um, well, I'm gonna come back to this once I have this disconnected, but all I gotta do is let this drain out. These are all PEX lines. Uh, so they just undo with the fittings here real easily. So I'm just going to disconnect this one here, disconnect this one here, disconnect the gas, and then pull the vent out, and we're good to go. And then all these lines will get replaced. Uh, you can see the plumber that did this used copper on one side, and then he used this flexible plastic tubing on the other, because this is actually what the house uses. You can actually see uh, the old plumbing down here. This is a section of it where it used to connect into the house and then when I redid a lot of stuff in here I went to this newer style which is actually kind of neat it is it is flexible you can actually bend this and you know whatnot um, but it puts the it comes together really easy you just have to cut the pieces and snap it however you know you can't be copper in my opinion but given everything else is uh, this plastic here I'm just going to continue on with that what I'll probably do is either I'll leave this as is and I'll just put a new piece of this white pipe all the way up and then when I get to here I'm going to put an elbow on it and I'm going to connect it to a shut off so I could kill it here which obviously I don't have on either side right now and then either I'm going to you know put some kind of a hose fitting on here so it connect with a hose or I'm gonna have to you know solder on fittings onto here and then adapt it I haven't exactly figured out that yet I have to take a trip to the hardware store to pick up everything and then once I get that I'll decide where to go so I'll come back to this once I have a major uh, improvement on my uh, status right now got the old beast out and as you can see the vent for my dryer got a little bit busted up in the process which is Fine, no problem. I can fix all that as part of this uh, repair job here. In fact, um, I'm kind of glad I have this out because I was going to do this anyway. I just didn't really feel like going through the process of doing this just for that. Yeah, unfortunately, not having tile underneath this floor, the wood kind of soaks up that water pretty good. I've tried my best to suck it up with the soft vac you can see over here, but to no avail. But with that, now I have everything out and I'm ready to go to the store to get the hot water tank itself. Just been putting it off because I've been trying to decide which one to get. But at this rate, you can't put it off any further. So with that, let me go to the store. We'll be back with the new tank and the appropriate pieces to fix everything else here that's wrong. Here's the old one out in the deck. You can see the crap that came out of it. This is the outside cat that likes to hang around my house. Ugh. Straight up hoopa jooped. Got as much off of this as I could. Here's the new one in the car. Got to get this sucker out and done. It is after all Halloween. Be time to hand out candy soon. Fancy. And she's shorter than the old one too. You can see I started cannibalizing the other one. We went with this one because it had a good warranty on it and the price was right. See how long she lasts. Let's get her in. Did a couple things with this guy before we get it into the back room, like install the fitting for the gas hose, and also put the uh, pipe fittings on top. Uh, I'm using these inlets, going a flexible pipe here instead of uh, just trying to make a bunch of adapters to get it into there. And these actually came with the tape and actually compression fittings and everything to go to the to the PEX pipe I'm using. So that's pretty good. Well, that wasn't so bad. As you can see, I have new lines ran. Uh, the leftmost pipe over here is the hot water going into the house. So I just put this little coupler here, 
ran a new pipe up, connected an elbow at the top, short piece with the converter to convert over to the threaded piece to go into here. Now this did come with the um, brass compression fittings and it just wasn't giving me any sort of confidence trying to smush that down onto this pipe so I just went with the adapters I already bought anyway. You can see the cold line coming in is the same thing with the exception of having a uh, actual shut off this time over here. And if you follow that down, mind the snapping knees, you can see this goes into the pipe T-fitting and this is where the cold goes into the house and like I said this is the supply coming in from the outside and then out uh, in up to up into the tank and down to the house so I'm gonna have the wife go outside um, basically right outside this wall under that spigot there's a shutoff that comes up out of the ground in an insulated box with a heat rod and all that and that's gonna she's gonna turn that on I'm gonna check in here to make sure nothing's leaking and then if that's good then I'm gonna open up the top here and make sure this tank starts filling up and uh, we'll go from there now I'm gonna open up a hot tap in the furthest room of the house which is the front bathroom uh, you can see I got the gas line hooked up too, so I got to turn that on. This does have a safety feature where if this thing goes wide open, it shuts off. So you do have to turn the gas valve on slowly in order to not enable that. Uh, I've actually done that accidentally and wondered why the thing wouldn't light. All the fittings are tight and, and good. Uh, I just have to put some soapy solution together in a little bowl and just sprinkle that on there so I can just test that out. Make sure it's not leaking. And this has got a new system where it's not a thermal couple. This uses a thermal pile, which is basically a collection of thermal couples. And the way thermal couples work is it's a two dissimilar metals, and then when the heat's applied to them, there's a cold junction and a hot junction, and it generates electricity. It's in the millivolts, it's really low, but the thermal pile generates much more voltage. In fact, there's a little LED here that will light to let me know that this thing is, uh, pilot light is lit. So it was pretty neat. Also, you could see the third most white pipe on the side over here is actually the relief valve. So yeah, everything's hooked up. You'll also note that I've got this extension pipe up here for the gas um, exhaust. So that's all ready to go as well. So yeah, let's get the wife outside, get her to turn the water on, hopefully nothing leaks. Good news is I had no leaks on the inside. Bad news is it leaked on the outside. Where that pipe goes through the floor, it connects to an elbow, and when I initially pulled it up here to disconnect it, it, it disconnect down underneath the trailer too. And the way these work is, um, this is actually under pressure. You can see it still kind of turn it a little bit. There's a little collar here, and when you push this pipe in, that collar pushes in as well, and there's some teeth that line up. And then once you push this thing under pressure, this whole apparatus pops up and you can see there's a little gap here. So to disassemble this, you take the pressure out the lines, then you push back down on this pipe. And while you push down on it, you hold this ring together with this fitting and then you can pull the pipe straight out. So as you can imagine, when you have a fitting on the other end here and you pull this piece up, you push down on this collar on the other end of this floor. Cause this is, you know, not that, not that tight. So all I had to do was just go underneath and just with two hands hold this pipe and then put the fitting on the other side back up and just snap it back into place. Once I did that, turn the water on, everything was fine. So now we're going to go ahead and get this thing lit. This is a little bit different than my last hot water heater, so I'm going to have to read the instructions. But what I understand is, is the unit is it's kind of similar in the regards that you have to you have an on uh, off pilot on setting. And then uh, this pushes in all the way to allow gas to go to the pile light. There's our igniter here. And then you have your, your heat settings up here. So it's kind of nice to have that all on one knob instead of having the separate, you know, gas control valve in one and then the temperature on a separate. So that's a nice idea. We'll see how long these last, like I said. Um, the only thing I really have to do is once I get this thing completely, you know, written off the list is just recork it here. So let's see what happens when we get this thing lit. And we have success. That was relatively easy. Apologize for not actually showing you step by step everything involved in this, but I really just wanted to get it done because it's, you know, my hot water after all. Uh, 
but you can kind of get an idea. There's a million and a half videos on YouTube to actually how to do this step by step. And I just wanted to show you my particular situation because I am using this plastic tubing. But yeah, well, thanks for watching and stay tuned for more.